Today we're going to have a look at a Philips radio from 1950. 1950, so it's pretty old. And this is the Philips BX200U. BX200U, the radio covers the long wave band, the medium wave broadcast band, as well as the short wave from 13 meters to 15, uh, 50 meters. So it's a three band radio. And it's a very simple radio. This uh, this was one of the low end radios. A few people who didn't want to spend too much money. And why that radio was, uh, was a budget radio, I'll show you in a minute. Let's first have a look at the radio all around. Here is the rear of the radio, and uh, it's a tube radio, obviously. And we will have a look at the inside so that you have a better idea of what this radio is and what it can and cannot do. Like I said, it is a very simple radio, and uh, that was especially brought into the market for the budget conscience people. Uh, this comes off as a whole. I already had loosened it, so it comes off easy for the video. Bottom plate and rear plate. Here you see the tubes that we uh, we have in this radio. It's the UCH42 as the uh, RF stage and the mixer. UF41 as the uh, IF tube, intermediate frequency tube. Then we've got a UBC41 as the detector and the audio uh, driver. Then we have the UL41 as the PA tube and the UY41 as the uh, rectifier, single phase rectifier. So you're wondering where is the transformer in this radio, the power transformer? Well, there isn't any because this radio was supplied directly from the mains. So U, the U kind of tube, stands for tubes that consume 100 milliamps. So it's not the voltage that's defined, it is the current that the tubes take. And as such, you can put all those tubes in series. So what they did is they placed the filaments of all those tubes in series and then there were a couple of huge resistors that were used to burn off the rest of the energy. So if this radio was used for 110 volts, here you can see those filaments. If the radio was used for 110 volt operation, then all those filaments would be put in series together with the, uh, you no, know, without the scale light, which is over 100 milliamps. So if you add the filament voltages for these tubes up, then you have exactly 110 volts. So that could be connected directly to the 110 volt mains. And if you would switch the unit into 20 volts for European voltages, then you would have these resistors here in series with the tubes as well as the scale light, uh, which would then uh, match the whole thing to 100 milliamps. And like I said, you would burn off all the excessive energy in these resistors here. These resistors here would be needed to uh, also lower the voltage on the uh, high voltage uh, rectifier. Uh, for 110 volt this uh, diode rectifier would directly be connected to the mains through here and that would then yield uh, about 110 volts times square root 2 after rectification and buffering with these two capacitors which is about 140 150 volts and uh, again at 220 volts, there would be a resistor or two placed in series to the point where you would burn off the excess of energy. So the result was that this radio was getting pretty hot. About half of the energy that the whole radio takes is burned off in these resistors if you have it in 220 volts. At 110 volts, it's not as bad, but it's still kind of a uh, a hot running radio, especially because of this tube. This is a single. Uh, 
a single phase tube, a phase rectifier, UY. Like I said, U stands for 100 milliamp uh, filament current, and the Y stands for single diode rectify di rectification diode. And the, f the four, uh, they're all 40 tubes, stands for the fact that these are 8-pin rimlock tubes. Uh, it was done by Philips in the 50s and it was not maintained very long. Uh, at the end of the 50s they switched to 9-pin Novel tubes. So these were not produced for very long. The fun part is this tube here, uh, it's kind of old-fashioned, that is a bit much, you know, like I said, the whole thing gets very hot. So what we'll do, we'll restore the radio and also do a few modifications that will make the radio run a lot less, a lot less hot. For one thing, we'll just use a simple diode instead of that tube. Uh, for instance, the tube can rectify 100 milliamps max at 500 volts. This diode can handle 2 amps at 1000 volts. So that's one change we will make. Of course, when I do that, well, taking out one of these tubes in this whole filament string, and then I'll have to change this network here. We won't be using resistors anymore. We will be using a capacitor. And many people might not know that, but you can also burn off voltage, not energy, voltage in a capacitor. But you have to do some calculations to make that work. And I'll show you that later. And when we do that, then at least we won't have any energy burned off in resistors anymore. And we don't have heat burned off in this rectifying tube anymore. The consequence is that the radio will only work on 120 volts. That's what I will calculate the capacitor for. Uh, not a big deal. We're in the US here and I don't need it to run at 220 volts. If I really wanted to run at 220 volts, I can change the capacitor value. Uh, so it would be possible to easily set it for 220 volts if you wanted that, but I don't see any need for that. So we're going to restore it, and we're going to uh, we're going to change the power supply section to the point where we don't burn off all that energy. I did uh, the, the math on it already. Uh, once we have done the whole modification, the whole power that the radio will consume will go from about 45 watts to less than 20, probably around 8, 16 to 18 is my uh, estimate. So that makes a big difference and will make this unit run much cooler. We'll have to do uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, repairs though. For instance, this uh, uh, socket is uh, burned up. This is some kind of phenolic material. It's not ceramic, unfortunately. This tube gets very hot, this PA tube, and I'll have to replace that socket. That one was burned up too, but that one is going to go anyway. Remember, we're going to put a diode there. The others don't run that hot. The uh, RF tubes and the uh, and the, the preamp tube doesn't run very hot, so these sockets are good. But that will have to be replaced. That will have to go altogether. The resistors will go, obviously. I will have to replace the uh, the buffer capacitor, which is sitting in the back there. Hopefully, I can do that by putting modern capacitors, electrolytic, electrolytic capacitors inside there so it still looks the same. If not, I will have to replace that with uh, uh, with capacitors that we place underneath the sh chassis here. Well, one thing you see here is these Philips TAR capacitors. They will have to go. There is a, a number of them in there. Uh, and there is another one that we probably will have to replace. I need to measure that. So we'll have to replace uh, a couple of capacitors. Here is another one. Uh, that uh, actually there's three here. One, two, three. They will have to uh, to go. The resistors are okay. I already measured those because you can have resistor drift in radios like these. These are resistors I never trust, but I measured it and it still is the right value. So we're not going to mess with that. And of course I'll have to replace the dial string because that's quite loose. And uh, we'll probably have to do something different for this dial light here. Because right now that burns off 2 watts. And I don't want to put it in series with the tubes anymore because the tube, tube uh, filaments are much more reliable than these dial lights. And if you put it in series with the tube, like it was originally for this radio, that's the way Philips designed it. If the dial light goes out, the whole radio dies on you, so we don't want that. Probably do something with LEDs, I have to figure that out. 
So we'll uh, we'll do a few uh, modifications, but uh, not too drastic. Uh, that potentiometer has to be cleaned drastically. Here is the band switch. I already noticed that that one is pretty dirty. Uh, you know, in the old days, not that long ago, they used this contact spray with oil in it. And that makes the switch work for a, for a week or so. And after that starts to collect all kind of dust. And the problem becomes even worse than uh, before, uh, before the, the, the cleaning. So what we'll do is we'll use this, uh, this is a very good cleaner that doesn't leave a residue. And the way you can see that this is done right is when this uh, switch waver is parts dry. There should not be any oil there. When it, once it looks parts dry, bone dry. Uh, then we have it cleaned properly. And the same is true for this old potentiometer. Uh, there is a uh, on-off switch there that also needs cleaning. So there is going to be some work, but all in all the radio is pretty restorable. The chassis is in a nice condition, there is no corrosion. So uh, uh, the case is, is good, there is no cracks there. And the, uh, the, back, uh, the back plate is without any damage. So this thing is very restorable and that's what we'll do. We'll have to replace the power cord of course. This thing has the... Uh, here this is a disaster. This is the 220 volt plug. We'll change that into a 125, uh, uh, 110 plug. The whole, the whole cable will have to be replaced because this is uh, rubberized on the inside and that has all dried out. So that's going to go too. Okay, here you see the uh, UL41 socket, which is much darker than this one. That's the driver. This is the PA2. As you can see, it's, uh, it's black blackened and it's brittle. So that's got to go. We have to replace this. And this is the uh, socket for the uh, rectifier tube, single phase rectifier tube, which weird enough is still in fairly good condition. But it's going to go nevertheless because, like I told you, the uh, rectifier tube we're going to get rid of. And here we have the buffer capacitor. I don't know if it's visible. But uh, that is 2 times 50 microfarads. I was going to replace that with these. 47 microfarad 4 and fold 2 of them. There is probably enough room to put it under here. But what I'm going to try is, once the chassis is out of the case, I'm going to try to uh, to get that capacitor off there. Loosen that nut that holds the whole thing. And see if I can just put these two caps inside the existing can. I think that is possible. Of course you got to take out everything in there that's right. That's in there right now, which is always messy. But and of course these are the uh, tar capacitors that need to go. I told you about earlier. And here is another two of those. And there is actually another one up here. So there is some capacitor changing to do as well. We got the uh, chassis out of the case, and we have replaced the whole bunch of capacitors. They actually turned out to be even more than I thought. A couple were hidden. That became visible once I got the chassis out of the case. This is the uh, resistor we don't need anymore. So here's a few new caps. Here we got one. We got one here, we got one here, we got one here. And I am uh, not done with this section. This is where the uh, PA used to be. There is going to be a new um, uh, tube socket there. This is the uh, tube socket for the rectifier that I still need to uh, remove. So we still got a lot of work to do. But uh, we're making good progress. Now the other thing I did was uh, taking this uh, electrolytic capacitor out of it. You know, the buffer capacitor. That thing is uh, most likely not good anymore. So what I'm going to try to do is open this thing, remove the contents, like I told you earlier, and uh, put two of these in there to make it look original. If for whatever reason it turns out to be not possible, then we um, 
will just mount capacitors underneath the chassis and uh, do it that way. This is the top of the chassis. Variable uh, capacitor. This is the output transformer for the uh, PA. This is where that uh, capacitor went. And like I said, most likely we'll uh, place that back again. And here we have the other side. This is the uh, speaker wires. Cleaned it up a little bit, it's not done yet completely. Here we have the uh, PA section, like I said. This is uh, going to be there. And that we have to remove. The resistors have been removed. So, like I said, we're making progress. I think that's a little bit problematic. That chassis was mounted inside the case on rubbers. And those rubbers have completely deteriorated. They are uh, rock hard and brittle. I have to come up with a different solution. I don't think it has to be rubberized. It's not like this thing is going to be thrown around. But I have to do something to uh, make this uh, fit. Because the way it is now, if I slide it back into the case, it's going to be all loose. So I have to come up with a better solution there. That was the only unpleasant surprise that I had not expected. For the rest, everything is going to plan. Alright, I got that uh, open. Now we got to remove the inside. The way to do that is to uh, make this really hot. So the, the uh, wax and the uh, tar melts. And then we'll um, move it out and then put new stuff in there. Okay, we got everything out of there. There's might some piece of bees in here, so you gotta be careful, but this is what came out of there. Now we're gonna put the new uh, the new caps in there. Alright, we got the capacitors all in there. And that's now going to be in the tube. We glue it all together and we should be okay. I had to drill a little hole for the ground contact because the tube is aluminum and you can't solder on that so I created an extra ground contact. But for the rest it looks pretty nice. That is now completed. We have our rebuilt capacitor. This here is the ground connect that I mentioned earlier because the can is not ground anymore I had to introduce a separate ground contact but for the rest it is uh, it is uh, basically 50 plus 50 microfarad it is 250 for the original one but the new one is 450 volts so we are actually exceeding the original specification and it's ready to go back on the chassis we're making some progress. As you can see, the buffer capacitor is back in place. We uh, replaced a whole bunch of capacitors. Uh, I cleaned all this here. Now I got to restring the, uh, the dial cord. It was originally not done right. Somebody already had messed with it. So I uh, looked in the manual how to, uh, to do that. So that is the next step. We cleaned all this. That was very messy and dirty. And also this whole mechanism here was a mess. That has been cleaned. And the other thing is, this was kind of mounted as, you know, on rubber. And the original rubbers were completely uh, gone. So I used these, these rubber grommets that actually, uh, with a little bit of force, were able to go in there. It was a hard job because you don't want to exert a lot of force. The whole thing is so fragile. Here's the other one. So we managed to actually keep that rubber suspension kind of intact. That's kind of nice. So we're going to uh, restring the dial cord now. And then we're getting close to the point where we probably want to test this thing. 
once bought this uh, special cord on eBay, it was pretty expensive, so we need to figure out the exact length in order not to waste too much. So we're going to do that with a copper test string to figure out the total length, and then we install the final one. As you can see, I got it in there now with the uh, copper wire. That's obviously not the final uh, solution. But at least now I know what the length is going to be. And now we can make a uh, proper string with the right length. Well, it looks like we got it done. To be honest with you, this is actually the part I like the least. This is a hard job. I had a hell of a time to get that spring in there, but it looks like it's uh, it's working. I'll have to oil it a little bit here and there. I didn't want to do that before I put the string on, because when it gets greasy, then it won't work anymore. So that's done. It looks like uh, we're done with all the soldering and replacing work. Uh, what else was done I had to clean this on off switch that is now working nice and clean tensiometer obviously has been cleaned as the voltage carousel has been placed back uh, but not hooked up obviously it's only for 120 volts now we put the uh, capacitor there that is the filament capacitor I'll show in a different video how you calculate that we'll not do it in this video it will get too long and we'll put people to sleep uh, obviously the buffer capacitor was repaired and placed back all bad tar capacitors were removed and modern ones were put in everywhere and uh, the only thing that at one point I will have to do is come up with a solution for this uh, dial light but I think I have a good idea I'll show you that later of course the uh, the uh, rectifier tube is not there anymore that was this tube that has now been replaced by this little diode here that now rectifies the incoming AC and puts it into the buffer capacitor to give the plate voltage. So we got plate voltage in place, we got filament voltage in place, power cord obviously has been replaced. The nice thing about the uh, American plugs is that they have, a, they're, they have polarity. The thick prong is ground, or, or not ground, it's neutral, and the thin prong is hot, so I wired it up such that the neutral is uh, always on the same potential as the chassis, which means that I can, cannot zip myself. And in the, in the, Amer in the um, European system that is not possible. They don't have that concept, so that there is a 50% chance that you have 220 volts on the chassis. That's not going to be the case here. He will always have the chassis at neutral. That's kind of nice. Uh, dial string has been replaced. That works quite nice. Um, and of course this whole uh, band switch, the wafer switch has been cleaned. That was kind of a mess. And it's all clean now. So I guess we're ready to uh, fire it up outside the case and see if everything works. I'll power it up. Jim and Marion's last days are the same. Then ran up to the temple. And those two major contributors to inflation are both in nature. The illness is a jinx until her victims confronted her on national television. Uh, how do I put it from a, uh, what have you done for me lately? So many steps. If one bird gets two. Use, use promo code KEN, K-E-N. Buy one, get one free. Check it out at MyPillow.com. To this dark place, to this dark hour. Federal 
the outside inside of the box. Yes. Something different and some insurance, but this is now we mentioned the most Well, as you see, it works quite well. I guess we can uh, put it back into the case. All right, I got the whole chassis in there now. Like I told you earlier, the chassis was suspended with these rubber thingies here and here and also in the back there. And these rubbers have completely deteriorated. So uh, what I did is I, I took these paper washers that I had and I uh, I kind of adhesive the stack of these things in there and this stack is bigger than that one because there's this goes kind of tapers off there in the uh, in the slide here. So same same sign same thing on this side. So I uh, had to dremel them a little bit to make it fit. But we did that and it is a good fit now. It's obviously not suspended, but it's not like I'm going to use this thing in an area where it's very much exposed to vibration. That's not going to happen. So uh, we got that done and the only thing I need to do now is, you know, take the chassis out of the case again and clean the case. Because that's kind of dirty. I'll uh, just wash that with some detergent. Not gonna repaint the case. I, I don't think it's necessary. It looks pretty good. In any case, here you see we don't have the uh, the rectifier tube. We did get a new socket uh, for a ceramic socket for this EL41, and the other sockets were still good, and so were the tubes. So we are in pretty good shape. I left. Uh, I didn't clean too much here because I wanted to make this visible. The BX200U is the model number, the 452. That has to do with the IF frequency, 452 kilohertz. Philips changed that a little bit for different markets. For instance, in Germany, I think they used 460. In other parts of the world, it's 455 or even 450. That has to do with uh, what's going on at that particular frequency. Some countries, some areas have, have pretty strong uh, location beacons or... Uh, or, um, or data data transmitters for uh, offshore. They're not being used anymore today. Today everything goes by satellite for ship traffic. But in those days that was not the case. And in order to event IF breaking through, they, for different markets, they changed the IF frequency. And you can see that here. In any case, they're uh, pre looking pretty good. Like I said, speaker isn't in there yet. I gotta clean this thing the case that is and then we're pretty much done with this all right this is just one thing I wanted to show you what I'm gonna do to replace those uh, to replace that little uh, incandescent bulb that consumes so much power this is uh, the same trick I did with as with the uh, filament uh, uh, resistor which I now have as a capacitor I have this same capacitor, or not the same, but a capacitor here. This is, uh, according to my calculations, uh, these uh, uh, need a current source of 20 milliamps, these uh, bright LEDs. And um, that translates to a capacitor of about 0.47 uh, microfarad, 0.47. And then, the, uh, and of course, this is just AC, 120 volt AC. This will limit it to 20 microamps, uh, milliamps, excuse me. And then here we have a bridge rectifier made out of four diodes. And then we have the two LEDs in series, which are exposed to 20 milliamps current. And then a voltage develops across the two of 6.23. They're basically their own voltage limiters. If you uh, 
put 20 milliamps uh, uh, current through these things about three point something voltage will settle across each of them and they're in series now it does re it does require a um, an electrolytic capacitor I have uh, a small one in there five microfarad only needs to be 10 volts and then it works fine I tested it before without the uh, capacitor then the LEDs blow right away that is not uh, uh, the way it should be, but once you put an elect electrolytic capacitor in there, it doesn't have to be a high voltage uh, type. Like I said, it's only uh, 6.23 volts in this case. Uh, then it works perfect, and uh, I think I'm going to put that in there as a replacement to that uh, difficult to get and uh, high power consumption incandescent light bulb. Two of these bright LEDs LEDs will perfectly illuminate my dial scale. So that's another way, another method where I use the capacitor as a current source, a lossless current source. I got the uh, LEDs all in there. Doesn't really want to focus. Okay. They're all in there, three in series. And then we have our rectifier here four diodes and then we have our our capacitor here as a current source it's a current limiter I should say and it is of course AC so if we plug this in then it should work there we are works nice very simple it's the simplest LED constant current source you ever saw basically no electronics just the rectifier and a capacitor and we're gonna obviously build that into our radio works great I cleaned the case inside and out so now I'm reassembling this uh, this indicator, this me, this uh, pointer assembly. I respray painted this because it was pretty rusted, and that goes in here. And then I got to screw it together. And then, of course, there is the speaker, which I also cleaned as good as that is possible. So that will also uh, be placed back in the radio. And then we're getting close to completion. I obviously got to connect the LED. I made a nice terminal here, which allows me to add the capacitor, which is needed, as I showed you earlier. But uh, we're almost done here. All right, the radio is basically done. As you can see, the uh, dial light works fantastic with the uh, with the LEDs. What what lumber's done? Yeah, yeah and I and I try to talk through because um, you, you <laughs> to believe. You never learn from history if you erase history. Yeah. Tons. And in the other, this uh, one of the players, one of the El primer día aluará el pronóstico de la Escribió libretos a Ned Rumbao, asesora Marta Susana Prieto, dirección 1-3-5-6-5-1000. That's 8-1-3-5-6-5-1000. Put a stop to your erectile dysfunction and experience what I have.
for more information, convince me. You see, it works great. The best part. I didn't need to. That's the name of frequency that breaks through. There's only one, it's not too bad. Se vende un cadre pic. The type the teams meet for. I'm here with Bob. Hey, hi, Bob. Hey. He doesn't say much, but he's the mascot for Badger Bob Services. You Works know, very well. Service focused, air conditioning, plumbing, appliance, and electrical. Your radio does have shortwave, but you know the image uh, the image rejection is so bad there that you basically hear every station twice with about one megahertz separation. But it does work. Pretty difficult to tune that in. Does work. Okay, I have switched to the long wave band, but there is no broadcast in the US. Nothing comes through. Might be able to pick something up at night from Europe. I'll try that later, but as it is today, during the day, nothing. A last look at the insides now that it is all completed. A little bit more light, maybe. And here is the bottom. As you can see, this is the, uh, the LED assembly. This is the rectifier I was talking about. Uh, this is the ballast capacitor for the LED lighting. So it used to take 2 watts. Now it's less than uh, 50 milliwatts that's being consumed for the light. And we get a lot more light, actually. You probably saw that. Display looks better now than it ever did. This is the ballast capacitor for the uh, for the uh, uh, tubes that are basically uh, have their filaments in series. The original resistors have been removed, and of course all the capacitors are, ch are, are replaced. The switches have been thoroughly cleaned. Potentiometer has been thoroughly cleaned. The chassis has been cleaned. There is a new dial string that was actually a tough one. And we replaced that uh, tube socket with a ceramic one. The other ones are still the phenolic ones. They didn't get too hot. They haven't turned black. But the, uh, the, the power tube, that tube had the uh, tube socket burned up. So that has been replaced. And of course the uh, UL, uh, sorry, UY41 rectifier has been removed altogether as have all the resistors that were sitting here. So the radio now consumes one-third of what it was when it was uh, in a regional condition. One-third the power. The um, voltage carousel I have locked now at 127. Uh, actually I soldered it so somebody cannot pull it out and think that they can put this radio on 220 volts because obviously that is not the case anymore. The radio can be easily set for 220 by changing the ballast capacitors but uh, I'm not going to do that because we don't have 220 here 120 is what we have and it works great 
So that's basically our radio, our BX200 U radio. Oh yeah, that was clean too. I forgot to mention that these rubbers have been replaced. So it turned out to be more work than I actually expected, but it was worth it. This thing will now last another 50 years, if not longer. Uh, because these capacitors will last uh, a long time. And of course we had the uh, buffer capacitor that you see there uh, uh, repaired. There's two new caps in there while maintaining the original look. So uh, we can put the uh, the cover, the back cover on it and test it again. It is now uh, late in the evening. I wanted to show you the shortwave performance which is quite good. The National Museum. The present building of the museum was built in the <laughs> This cooling was completed. Well, the talented Jordan is well, the 50 meter band. Como na verdade, boa palavra é a verdade. Desta forma, os seguidores de A, assim como a Rússia, devem estar. de la huerta de una familia con un hijo recién nacido en estas escenas hay una curiosa mezcla de es actually 20 meter handband and This is the highest station I can receive in the uh, close to the 50 meter band. As you see, short wave performance. Short wave performance pretty good too. That concludes the end of our video. The Philips. Philips BX200U radio. Fine product. We have so many mattresses in stock. Works quite well. We need to clear them out. So now until the end. Maybe this will inspire you to uh, restore your own vintage radio. Mattress Home. Our everyday low prices. Thank you for watching this.